welcome to today's video you guys if you don't know already i was part of the next face wars this year the top 30 but unfortunately i did not make it to the top 20 round but i still wanted to do the challenge that they were doing which was machinist and i took my own take on it to do more of a steampunk body art so that's what we're doing here today if you want to see how i created this look please continue watching and please subscribe if you haven't done so already so also in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create some of the props that I did for the look. And first we're gonna start off with the eyepiece. I got a bag of these wheel gear things from Amazon for like six bucks and I'm taking three different sizes from here. I'm taking the larger one, putting a smaller one on it and then a smaller one on that to create the eye. I'm just using some glue from the hot glue gun to put them all together into the shape that I want. Once I have the shape, once it's dry, I'm adhering it to some foam. The reason why I did this foam is because it's gonna be going on my eye and I wanted to create a barrier in between my eye and the actual piece itself. Um, so you'll just see me cutting out all the spokes here. And honestly, this is pretty much all I did for the look besides add on some chains after this or the chain. So glue again, the hot glue gun onto the foam and then we'll move on to the chain. The chain, I just got a large thing for like 10 bucks, but I used the coupon at Michael's for like, you know, 40% off, obviously. Because people don't really spend like real money without coupons there, right? Right? Okay, so I'm just adhering it to the eyepiece using, again, the hot glue gun, cutting off any excess chains. And this is the final look. You'll see later how I adhere it to my face. But next, we're going to move on to the top hat. I actually created the hat from scratch, so I used foam again. I used black because that's the color I wanted, but you could use whatever you are preferring for your look. Again, using the hot glue gun, and I'm just making a bunch of shapes into a nice little tiny hat. I knew that I didn't want it to cover my entire head just a piece, so I chose not to make it the size of my head, but if you're doing this to actually fit onto your head, I'd make it a lot bigger than I did here. Now I'm cutting a bunch of little pieces up from the foam because we're just gonna start to adhere these to the actual hat, again using the glue gun, just to create this kind of fun steampunk look. There's no rhyme or reason to any of the patterns that I put on here. I just started placing them around until I felt like it looked pretty cool. I'm here taking the other end of a pen cap just to create these almost indentations that look like nails or a place where nails would go in the hat. Uh, so that I really loved. Here I'm taking some more of those wheels and just adhering them to the hat themselves. I didn't really show too much of it, but as you can see, those are all the ones that I added to it. I then took this spray paint and sprayed it on just to give it that little more rustic look for the rest of the look. Now onto the first part, which is the makeup application. I actually already have my foundation, concealer, and brows on, so it's a nice fresh face. I'm just going in and doing all these other steps that are a little bit more specific to this look. So first going in with this bronzer, just really bronzing up the face a little bit, nothing too specific about contouring, more just bronzing and warming up the face. Now I'm going in with this blush light from Melt Cosmetics. These blushes have a cool tint to them, so they're kind of like highlighters, they're kind of like blushes, they're really, really nice. But here's the real highlight. These are amazing, I love these. These are Physician's Formula Butter Highlighters. Oh, this one's in the shade Champagne. And we're just gonna highlight the face a little bit. I'm kind of going through the makeup pretty quickly because this isn't really the focal point of the look. I'm really gonna focus here a little bit more on the one eye that's not gonna be covered. And other than that, that's pretty much all we're doing to the face. So let's move on to that eye. I want to prime it a little bit with the Matte Cosmetics Soft Ochre Paint Pot. This is just gonna help the shadow stay on a little bit better. As you can see here, that's where the eye is going to be later. So we're only doing one eye here. So using the Jacqueline Hill palette from Morphe, this is the collab that they have. I'm just doing a very simple eye. I'm just doing some warm shades and I'll list all of the shades in the description box below um, because I have to look at the actual palette to know what shades they were. But I started off with light shades and transitioned into darker or darker shades. Once I get that cropped down, I'm gonna go ahead in with this black smudger liner from NYX Professional Makeup. Oh my god, you guys, look how dark this is. This was the first time I had used it, and I am obsessed with it. This is perfect for a smoky eye, which is what we're going for today. So I'm just packing this on the lid, being sure not to bring it too, too high. But I am going back in with a brush that I used earlier just to blend it into that eyeshadow. Once I have that packed down, I'm using this loose pigment from Makeup Geek. 
I love this shade. It's quite like an OG shade that I've had for so long, but I thought it was perfect for this look because it has that like antique gold look to it. I wanted to also make it a little more vibrant, so I added some MAC Fix Plus to my brush, which would help in any situation to make anything adhere better and look brighter. And now we're just putting some black eyeliner in the waterline. This is from Melt Cosmetics. This is a great eyeliner for your waterline if you're looking for one. Just bringing that eyeshadow down a lower lash line. And again, this is pretty much all I'm doing for the eye look. It's pretty simple or at least straightforward. Pop it on some lashes from Sephora. Um, because again, that's not the focal point of this look. What we're going to focus on is the actual body art that goes with it. So after you pop on some lashes, make sure that they're adhered nice and easily. This is what that one eye is going to look like. And that's all we're doing for the face. We're not doing the other eye because it's going to be covered. So let's focus on the body now. As with all my body paints, I sketch it out. You don't have to do this, but this is just a technique that really helps me. You can use an eyeshadow. You can use an eyeliner. You can use really anything to map it out. Just be sure, in my experience, not to use anything that's like waterproof or too dark that you can't go over. This was a shade that I knew was going to be similar to the shades I was placing down, so that's why I'm using it here. But I'm mapping out all the areas that I want to do. I actually had drawn this out ahead of time, so I did it pretty quickly. Um, but now the fun part. Let's body paint. All right, so most of this look is pretty much made up of metallic shades. I typically like to use water-activated body paints, and I do in this video, but this gold actually is a metallic powder that you put some water on it. I actually use MAC Fix Plus, and it creates this amazing, vibrant shade. I mean, that is just a whole new level that was already on my neck there, which was just gold water-activated paint. So what we're doing is placing down all of the gold shades. Pretty much this look consists of gold and silver and black. <laughs> um, so I'm placing down everywhere that I know I want the gold to go. This is only sped up just because I'm just placing it all down just to show you where it's going to go. Now I'm going in with a water activated paint again from Mayron. This is a silver shade and I think it's called like Brilliant Argentina or something. I'll again list it in the description box below. But the first part of this whole pa painting is actually to just start to fill in everything. Around the coils, we're gonna be doing some more silver. The silver's kinda hard to see because of the lights, but just bear with me. Now I'm going in with dark brown Mayron paints and I'm filling in this other side of my arm. Because I'm right-handed, I try to keep it pretty simple on this side, although I did get a little bit more detail than I anticipated, but I'm trying to create this brown, um, almost just like arm shield. It's, I want it to be a little bit different than the detail that I'm going to do on the left arm. Once I'm done really mapping out where the harness is going to be, I'm gonna paint most of my arm brown. I'll come back to it later because I don't wanna get brown all over the place, but right now we're just filling in a few of the blank spaces. Now for these, these are the goggles that I purchased. I didn't make these, and I wanted to bring a little pop of color to look. So I'm what I'm doing here is trying to replicate what it looks like on the goggles, and that's what you saw me doing there. You'll see me focus on those a little bit later just because I wanna go back and highlight them. Now, all I'm doing is a lot of detail. I'm actually gonna pretty much just let you watch um, because all I'm doing is drawing all up and down my arm. And this is sped up, but I did take my time because I really want it to be extremely detailed. I wanted to have this chain going around the different pieces of the mechanical arm that I have here. And this is what I chose to do around these two pieces. Really, you'll just watch me connect them all and I'll come back to you in a minute and just kind of explain a few more things. Now comes the fun part, using black. Anywhere that there is empty space right now, like that bare skin, is where we're gonna fill in the black. I wanted my face to remain open, so no black is gonna go there, but from my neck down, any place that you see skin, you're filling in with black. The thing with the black body paint is, you have to do several layers, and because I was doing the body paint for so long, I think this took me like five or six hours, I mean, obviously this is sped up here, but, you want to make sure to go over layers and layers until you feel it looks good. I wanted to help myself out a little bit, so I used from NYX Professional Makeup one of their eyeliner sticks. I will again link it in the description box below. Because it's much easier to draw and outline those black areas than to use a paintbrush. You have more control with the pen. 
The only thing is I didn't realize that this particular one is waterproof. So getting it off was super hard, whereas water activated paints are much easier to get off. So it was easier to use this pen to outline all of the black areas, but it was harder to get off. So, you know, you gotta do anything you gotta do for a look. So again, just filling in all that space that still has skin. I really wanted to do that black first with the eyeliner just so I can get those details really close. Um, whereas a brush, I, again, don't have as much control with. So um, that's a really good tip if you're first starting with body painting. Feel free to use eyeliner sticks because they're much more easy to control than a paintbrush until you get it down. So now I'm going back with that pen and really just outlining all the detail that I did on my arm close to the different pieces and then I will blacken out the rest of my arm because of course I want to blend in with the background to create the illusion that I am pretty much just one big mechanical steampunk person here. I'm going in and creating some, oh this was good. I tried to use my left hand. I actually think I did a pretty good job but I try not to do too much detail on this arm and of course I did. So this is me just outlining all those spaces. I did need help from my sister just to help me fill in a couple of spots there because my arm was like cramping. I'm not used to using my left hand. But if you can't use your left hand at all, feel free to just keep the arm and that sleeve completely blank. So you can see the progress there with the arm. Again, just filling in that blank space on my arm. And now comes the final step. So this is the highlight and shading. This is where your look really comes to life. What I'm trying to do is give the illusion that these pipes and all these different metal pieces are actually folding on top of each other so to give them more dimension. So under each of the things, it's going to look as though I'm creating a shadow that would naturally be there if it was a real object. The things that I'm using to shade, there's a couple different shadows. I'm using a black, but I'm also using two shades from the Jaclyn Hill palette. One is more of like a bronze and the other one is closer to a black, but I kind of go back and forth between the three to create this look. Closer to where I want the shades to be is where you use the darkest shades, like the black up against that line. And then you fade it out to look a little bit more like a natural shadow. I wanted to give a little bit more dimension to this piece, this metal piece that was on my arm so that's what you see me doing here and actually going in and doing some black stripes now we're going to highlight i'm using the white liquid liner from nyx cosmetics going back to those two pieces on the chest and really just highlighting the places where the sun or the light would naturally hit at the highest points so i dab a little on i, I kind of blend it out with my finger feel free to use a brush or a sponge but i just wanted to give it as much dimension as possible so that's where this highlighting piece comes to play Really, this is the last step. I know this was so quick in going through it, but it's only because it's sped up. This, again, took me five to six hours. I wanted to make the last piece a little bit more look like leather. So I just went in and gave some highlights to the top of the shoulder and to the arm piece itself, which, again, was so hard using the black, uh, using my left hand. Um, but, you know, just do the best that you can. So this, you guys, adhering that piece, I would not recommend using spirit gum so close to your eye, but you know what? I did what I did I'd do for the video. I didn't put the spirit glue on my actual eye itself. I just put it on the top and bottom and held it there until it pretty much was set. You can do an eye patch if you want, where it's actually connected to your hair if you don't feel comfortable, but this is what I want to do for this look. I'm throwing on some black lip gloss, and I also later threw on some metallic gloss in the middle from Jouer. Again, I'll list that in the description box below. So that, my friends, is the final look. I hope that you liked it. Again, I'm not in the next top 20, but I wanted to do the challenge anyway. So if you did like this and you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe. Please comment below. Let me know that you're new here or if you're welcomed back. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Uh -huh.